My name is Eric Werner. Uh, I'm from Hartwood, Tulum. That's in the state of Quintana Roo in Mexico. Our culinary identity is um, really made up as it's a, uh, everything that we cook is over, over uh, open fire. Okay. And the identity is to be sustainable. Okay. The practice is to use all Maya ingredients that are grown locally from the community. Okay. That allows us to have an identity within the restaurant. We don't follow a trend. We're not trying to become something uh, different or, you know, uh, there's an expression of creativity, of course, but our main goal is to be sustainable, to have a, a business that is, you know, completely surrounded by the community. Well, I mean, I get surprised every day. You know, every day that I go into the interior, every day that I go to the, uh, the milpa or the, you know, the uh, different types of uh, uh, markets that are there uh, within the interior of the Yucatan, I am surprised constantly because um, over generations of farming produces different fruits and vegetables that I have never seen before and that the world has never seen before. Um, for one example would be the, um, where a, a one section of the milk would be growing squash for a very long time and then we switched it over and started growing melon. Okay? Before you know it, we had something called melon de milpa, which was, had a squash outside, vine like a squash, Okay, looks like a squash on the outside, but when you cut it and the uh, cut it open, it is a melon, or it looks like a cantaloupe. So things like that are constantly surprising me. Things like that drive me every day and my and my crew in the kitchen to find out more and to understand more. And once again, it goes back to education. It goes back to learning from the community, because these things are not new to them. You know, these things are new to me, and I'm a student and I'm learning. You know, every day. So if I was a, you know, a chef coming down there for my first day and um, starting to and really wanting to understand the, uh, you know, my surroundings within the Yucatan, it would be really to begin with the markets. It would begin to uh, wake up very early, be at the market by 6.30 and ask all of the people that are selling all their different fruits and vegetables, what is it? What is the name? Where does it come from? How do you cook with it? What season are we in? And that really kind of right there will give you a beginning understanding of uh, where you are and uh, you know what, what's around you. So much can stimulate my creative process. It's, uh, you know, it, it, when I was younger, it would come to me at like a flurry of different creative ideas, okay? But the most important thing behind creativity is discipline. And having discipline allows you to become more creative. Um, having memory of the food and what you've eaten in the past and what is delicious to you allows you to be creative because that will develop your flavor profile of what things go with what and how they taste well and, and what makes sense, you know? Um, I would be driving to, a, uh, to our pig farm and on the way I would see tons of papaya and, I, and you know, I'd be like, papaya, pig, you know, how can I incorporate both of these things? It's on my route, you know? So it goes as simple as that to as something as I just said before, you know? So the creative process is constantly moving and um, you know, you have to uh, take care of it. You have to get some rest and you know, you have to speak to others about the creativity, bounce ideas off other chefs and other, and your customers. Um, you know, when you look at out your restaurant and you see a family or a couple or somebody eating their, your food and they're very happy and a big smile on their face, that also is creativity that inspires creativity just the same. Well, I, I grew up in uh, what lured me down to Mexico is that I grew up within the um, uh, Mexican culture of New York. All right, um, everybody that worked within the kitchen was Mexican. All the guys that we you know that we did all the prep with, that we cook service with, everything that I learned were from Mexican chefs. And their culture, when I even when I was younger, when I was 19 starting, was very welcoming and friendly. And it had this kind of uh, family, strong family, uh, you know, foundation to it, which uh, me coming from, you know, not such a big family. My parents passed away when I was younger. This was a family that accepted me, that brought me in and uh, that I learned so much from. And then um, when uh, my wife's family was going down to the Yucatan for a very long time, uh, from the 60s and 70s, my wife started bringing me down to the Yucatan. And that was about eight years ago, eight, nine years ago. Um, and uh, started showing me around to the farms and to the sea and said, you know, take a look at some of these things and, uh, you know, which started off as a vacation, later became my home, you know, and uh, it was as easy as that, you know. 
We have definitely a mix of customers within the restaurant. Um, we have a lot of regulars that come to the restaurant, a lot of people that come back year after year, uh, a lot of people from all over parts of Mexico, um, all across uh, you know, Europe, uh, Australia, across the world. Uh, Tulum is a uh, vacation spot and um, you know, I've seen um, so many families you know, um, have babies in their first beginning years and then they come back and the, the, the children are older and you know, you're feeding them through generations. And uh, it's something very special to see. You know, it's, um, uh, I'm constantly you know, tr working the oven and then running out to the dining floor and talking to people and you know, welcoming them. I work service almost every night of the year. So I think that it's very important for the chef to have interaction with his customers and getting that really strong sense of uh, you know, what's happening, what's going on. We are um, extremely close to 100% sustainable. Um, we, have, we run off all solar energy. Those solar panels go, to, go down to batteries that store that solar energy that we use during the night. Okay? Um, we have a system that breaks down all of our greases and fats. Okay? Then that's just normal food greases. We don't, we're not frying anything or anything like that during the day. Um, and uh, it's a natural en enzyme system that uh, lives and feeds off of these greases and fats and breaking them down 100% organically. We're producing close to, uh, right now I think we're at like 96 or 97% clean fertilized water that regenerates the mangroves around us. So we have beautiful lush mangroves around us. We also started growing banana trees that have large root systems that suck up all of this water and you know, grow astronomically. Um, it's, uh, uh, we're bringing all of our water in from town, from a, uh, from a cenote within the town. It's, uh, what else? I mean, we're, we're, we have no gas. We're not using any induction. Uh, we're running off of an oven and a grill, and that's how we run service. We have over 12 large coolers which we st with ice, and we store uh, all of our fish within that. We get all of our fish in daily, and we cook just for the evening service. So we calculate how much you know, food we're going to have for that service, and we also have you know, a tremendous amount of staff, so nothing goes to waste. Um, all, of the, um, all of our you know, uh, scraps from uh, fruits and vegetables go into a compost, which goes out to our farm, and then that is uh, you know, generated back into the soil. It's a um, 100% sustainable system with our surroundings, and it has to be like that all the time. All of, almost all of our fish is uh, spear caught. If not, then it's a uh, uh, line caught, um, and that's just single rod. It's just, a, you know, we have a team of, um, cooperative team of about 16 fishermen now, and that's about three boats. Um, these are small launches. We use no netting. We use no long lining, nothing like that. It's, uh, we're extremely very attentive to the way that we cook everything, the way that we catch everything, the way that we harvest everything. We use, it's a sapote. So um, there is a, it's like a tree, a uh, fruit wood, okay? And we're surrounded by, you know, it's like hundreds of miles of jungle, all right? And within that jungle is trees that are dead already and that are already going through a curing process. So we get a lot of that wood from already fallen trees. So we're not going and cutting down you know, fresh trees and curing it and drying it out where we're using what's available. Um, when we first built the restaurant, um, it was, we had to be very careful of the wood. We also use sapote and uh, of the wood that we were using because on the full moon is when all of the bugs leave the trees. The, the, the you know, a termite or something like that because there's a lot of termites within Central America. And um, so we were, had to be very careful about that. Little quirks and little things that you follow and become accustomed, which also you're learning from the community. You, when you're going into another country, and it's a good philosophy to have within your own country that you're native from, is understanding everybody's part in the community and their expertise. You know, if, I, if the guy down the street is growing tomatoes, and I have a small tomato garden in my house, I'm just growing from my house, but he's growing tomatoes and he does it for a living, of course he's going to know so much more than I am. So why not talk to him and understand what he's doing and work with him? Our restaurant in the next five years, and I think the restaurants around us in the next five years, will remain as they are today, you know, and hopefully so. I think that, uh, I mean, Hartwood has not changed um, in seven years, okay. Um, we're constantly doing maintenance. We're constantly, we have a team of three or four guys doing maintenance every day because we are right along the coast, so the salt air eats a lot at everything. 
um, an unmaintained restaurant within the jungle, the jungle will devour it, will take it. Okay. Um, so, you know, it, with upkeep and attention and hard work, uh, you know, hopefully, and, you know, God willing, we will remain in that way for the next couple of years, you know. My advice to uh, young culinary students that are graduating today, I think that hard work is definitely the key. All right? if, you, if you work hard every single day towards your goals and you follow your mentors and you work hard to get into tough restaurants and put your head down and keep going and keep going and keep going, then you're bound to get it. And as I mentioned before, discipline must happen before creativity. It really, you know, before I opened up my own restaurant, I had, you know, over uh, 12 years, 14 years, something like that within the industry, you know, and uh, it's definitely necessary. You know, um, a, lot of, a lot of frustration happens. You know, when you first go into the kitchens, it's, uh, you know, and your head chef yells at you for the first time, you take it, you're very sensitive and you take it very hurtful, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to make it, I'm not doing things right. But you get used to that, you know, and that's all part of it. You know, every, every chef that I've met that have, uh, you know, reprimanded me and sent me in the right direction has always gone through the things that I've gone through, you know, in my life. And they've always spoke out of, you know, an understanding rather than far away from me. I love chaya, I love the chili habanero, chili escatique. Um, I love the uh, melipono, which is the, uh, the honey from the Yucatan. Um, I, uh, there's so much. I mean, it, it goes as simple as a, um, as a pepita, okay? And it can go to something as large as, you know, a, uh, a, you know, a pineapple. I mean, it, there, there's so much that's down there. and There's so much that we're surrounded by. And uh, it's, uh, you know, going further and further and developing that, uh, you know, that true want for understanding. You know, the first time that I ever saw a... Um, a guanaba or a, a, a nona or, um, you know, a different type of, uh, you know, maracuya. It was, uh, you know, my eyes lit up every time. So there's so much that I love to work with. It's a restaurant that goes every day, all the time, okay? Uh, we, we, there's somebody in the restaurant overnight, you know, that's watching the oven as we're doing our braising, you know? Um, I think about the restaurant, I think about Hartwood, as a person in itself, okay? And this person is working along with our team every day. And we're counting on this person as a member of our team, just like we all are, like one big family. And, you know, my staff that's been with me since the beginning, uh, you know, I think that 80% of my staff has been with me since day one. And that goes something to say about our family that we have down there and about all of us working together, that's so special. I didn't truly understand the meaning of hard work until I fell into and came into the Yucatecan culture. You know, I, it's, I mean, it is incredible. It is incredible. And I am just extremely grateful to be amongst that community today. So.